Oh, well, hi. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paints. Kevin coming back to you this week. We're doing a two-part video here. So, one, we're doing an Alaris Custodian. I'm going to show you how I paint this sucker up. He turns out beautifully. Super impressed. Thing number two is I had a buddy hook me up with a gift card, and I said, hey, I don't have enough metallic paints. Let's try some out. Let's get some different ones. Let's step outside the GW box. So, we ended up getting a brand called Turbo Dork which they have a ton of color shifting metallic colors. So they have blues, they have golds, they have really any color. They also have color shifting paint, pretty neat stuff. So first on this guy, we come on top of the black primer with two cents by the Turbo Dork range. Goes on beautifully. This is thinned down. Um, it does kind of come chunky out of the paint pot. It's got a dropper bottle. So it comes out a little chunky. We hit it with some thinner, it turned out beautifully went right on it's got very small pigment flakes in there so it goes on super well on top of the two cents we come through with bullion this is just sprayed from a top down we're trying to leave the kind of copper tone in the lower recesses and focus our brighter golds up towards the tops again thin down goes on super beautifully the one thing i'm starting to notice with this is it doesn't brush well but airbrush shoot all day long so we take it a step up brighter, we switch over to Turbo Dork Gold Rush. Same exact concept as any other model we paint. We start out with our base tone, we come in with our mid tone, then we just keep working progressively up and up with the brightness towards the top of the model. So far so good. I'm rather impressed with this stuff. So I wanted to keep pushing the brightness towards the top. We mixed the Turbo Dork Gold Rush and 10 Star about one to one, threw it in the airbrush, let it rip. Again, we're having great results with this stuff. This stuff is very plug and play. You can just jam in your airbrush and start going to town on it. Especially whenever you're painting these custodians, just a super, super one color gold model. This stuff is exceptional. I gotta give it some credit where credit's due with it. So we just work this up again. We're working a smaller area, trying to focus our brighter points towards the top of the model. We do hit some little accents towards his feet. You know, some of the areas where light is gonna catch, but typically we're going just top down with this. Finally, we switch it up to just 10 star by itself. Extremely, extremely light sprays here. We're just pulsing the trigger of the airbrush, trying to get it to just affect it a tiny, tiny bit. Again, this stuff has good coverage. So be very careful if you use this stuff that you make sure you don't go too hard and oh crap, our gold dude is now a silver dude. So just keep that in mind. But honestly, if you control it, you don't have to have a nice fancy airbrush. You can just lay this stuff down. Just be careful. So our next step in this model is to come through with our Reckon Flesh Shade and start shading down these metallics just to add a little definition in the recesses where these silvers, where these golds are all playing towards the top, just add a little bit of differentiation to the surface. We did water this down a little bit and as you can tell I'm dumb, I decided to use about the smallest dang brush I had to work, make this work. Use a bigger brush, um, don't be this guy, use a bigger brush. Now, earlier when I said this stuff doesn't brush very well, it dry brushes just fine. We come through a Turbo Dork 10 Star. What I'm saying when I say it doesn't brush well is that it does not brush just with like a triple zero brush and you're trying to lay down highlights. For whatever reason, it doesn't work very well. We move on to a bad and black. We're starting to just line out all the crevices in his power armor. On this guy, it's only his undercarriage. Um, we're gonna go ahead and paint everything that is going to be silver later. But as far as the true blacks, creases in the power armor, anything like this, just the way he is sculpted, we don't have to worry about any of that. So we'll hit his undercarriage, we'll hit his axe blade, and then we gotta hit the bolter components and the casing for it. Don't forget about the little secondary bolter he's got behind uh, the axe blade handle, like way far down there. That is gonna be silver later. So next we move on to Mephiston Red. There's very few scattered details around this model in the actual red. However, just check the box art, take a look at it. There you can actually see the secondary trigger I was talking about. We're gonna hit his front loincloth and then he's got some tassels hanging from his pauldrons. We're gonna make sure we line those out with Mephiston Red. We will come back through later. We'll mat these down with some uh, shades and stuff like that deep in the recesses, but this will definitely give us a good starting point. Also, if you're feeling froggy, you can see where the leather red bits are under his shoulder pads and you can actually get to those and make sure those get painted. Worth the time in my opinion. 
So for the robes on his loincloth, we come through with gray seer. Honestly, this color is all but replaced Celestial Gray in my book. It's a little bit different color, but at the exact same time, it's just got such good coverage that I definitely recommend adding this to your arsenal in place of Celestial Gray. Then we come through with Thousand Suns Blue. We're going to knock out his eyes. We're also going to knock out any of the gems that are around the model. So we're just going around picking out anything that's going to be these blue gems, making sure that they get a nice coverage to them. Coming back to the metallics on the model, we come through with Bud Belcher. We're going to make sure we hit the blade to his axe here, all of his bolter components, front and back, and then the little tubes on his chest that are coming around his shoulders and around his waist. We just want to make sure we pick these out now, that way they're squared away. As you can see on his chest, I didn't come through with the black, so I did have to do a couple coats of that. It is a little difficult to pick out the underside of this axe blade, just work the best you can. Honestly, if someone's being that critical of your model, they shouldn't be looking at it. So next we're coming through with Army Painter Dark Tone. We're just picking out the tassels and adding a little bit of differentiation in the crevices on those. We're picking out the ropes and then we're picking out any of the metallic bits around the model. So low stress here. If you happen to get some of it on the gold, just try and dry your brush real quick and wick that away from where it's settled. The only thing we don't want this on is the golds. Just be cognizant of that. While we're doing this, guys, we just jumped 40 subscribers in one week. That's amazing. This channel has never seen that kind of growth. That is phenomenal. I cannot believe that. So thank y'all so much for y'all's support. That is amazing. Hopefully I can cre keep creating content that will keep y'all here and keep growing our viewership. Guys, thank y'all so much. If y'all have something y'all like for me to do, something y'all like to see, drop it in the comment sections. We'll try and get something done, show it how we paint it, and go from there. So again, holy crap, guys. Thank y'all so much. Next, we're moving on to Esh and Gray. All we're trying to do here is pick out the raised areas on any of the blacks. So we do a little bit of edge highlighting on his bolter, and then any of the joints in the flexible mesh of his undercarriage, we're just picking out the tops of. Super low stress here. If you mess it up, go back to your bad and black. Honestly, it's, again, one of those sections of the model that if they are staring it down, hey, give that back. You don't need to touch that. All right, so now we're coming through and trying to re-highlight what we matted down with the Army Painter Dark Tone previously. We're coming back through with Mephisto in Red and just trying to pick out the raised areas on the tassels and on the red parts of the model. Really, the only ones that require too much attention is just these little tassels. You can sit there and pick out some of the stuff on his loincloth, but meh, it's alright. Our final highlight color with the reds is just coming through with Evil Sun Scarlet. All we're trying to do here is hit the very tips of the tassels, anywhere where we want to just add a little bit of interest here. I will say that less is more when it comes to this. If you start taking too much of it away, you really start to lose the Mephiston red, and it starts to just become something much brighter than it was actually meant to be. So just working careful here, we just don't want to take too much of the previous color we laid down and take it over. So continuing with what we matted down with the washes and highlighting it back up, we come through with gray sear again. We're just trying to avoid the rev crevices where the shade settled and we're just trying to hit the upper parts of these ropes nodules. So just be careful here. If Again, if you mess up, it's just paint. Throw some more wash on it. Give it a couple minutes to dry. Keep working on it. We come through with ceramite white as the final highlight on these ropes. And again, we're just working in a smaller area to try and make sure that it has a little bit of differentiation to it. It goes from the deepest dark in the recesses to the brightest bright on the very top of it. To continue back to our stones, now we come through with Calgar Blue. Again, all we're doing here is starting with our base deep blue, coming in, highlighting that up on every single gem around his body. Eventually, we're gonna come through with Ceramite White and have it its brightest point, and they look like good. Same concept here with the Fenrisian Gray. We started with our Thousand Suns at 100%. Then we went to our Calgar Blue at about 60%. Fenrisian Gray, we're doing 30% of the actual exposed surface. Eventually, we go to just a dot of Ceramite White on there. 
to cap that off and make it look like a solid gem effect. So next we're coming through with Room Fang Steel. All we're trying to do here is the same stuff. We're trying to highlight up our metallics. So we had our previous color washed down, all of that. Now we come through with this Rune Fang Steel, try and highlight it up. You can definitely see on that cylindrical barrel when I added the paint, it just, boom, brightened it up a thousand percent. Then we move to this different style of doing a power axe that I wanted to try out this week. We throw in short, choppy, slicing lines into here. We're gonna have that as one of our base tones, come through with some Evil Thousand Suns Blue, and work in the same slashing highlights. So we're gonna be able to see the actual metal underneath, then we go to the Rune Fang Steel, then we go to Thousand Suns Blue, and it's just a slashing highlight the whole way down. Next one we're doing with it is Calgar Blue. So again, we're just coming through, we're putting these slashes in there, making sure that it's got a little bit of difference in there, and it's a really neat effect for the limited amount of work. Finally, so the final color we're coming through with the Ceramite White, we're just trying to do a nice edge highlight around the actual head of the axe. We're also going to throw some short choppy highlights towards the very tip of the axe head. So it'll make it look as though the power for this power axe is emanating from the tip of the axe. We're also going to come through and put down the final highlight on all of our gems, just a nice little dot of Ceramite White. Alright guys, well here's our finished custodian. Dude's looking fresh to death. I really like the way the Turbo Dork paint sprayed on there. Um, I'm glad I got to be able to do a review out of it. So here we go, official review time. Turbo Dork through the airbrush, 8 out of 10. Slam it home, it was legit. Otherwise, eh, 4 out of 10. It had very nice dry brush capabilities, but as far as painting it on by manual brush, nah. So... Anyway guys, this dude turned out awesome. Hopefully y'all can find something useful in this video. If you did, if you can, please like, comment, subscribe, share this to a buddy. Maybe they can find something useful out of it between the power axe, the paint review, whatever it may be. So I'm glad I can keep bringing you this content. I'm glad y'all keep coming back week after week. And again, thank you for the massive boost in subscribership. We'll probably hit 200 by next week, no problem. So thank y'all. I couldn't do this without y'all. Y'all are the real MVPs behind all of this. So. Thanks for watching. We'll check y'all next week. Bye for now.